how is it going guys? I'm so sorry for the delay on our next community clip, but I have had an absolute ton of 1BX clips and I've had to narrow this down a little bit. Now some of these are pretty old, so a lot of our submitters may have probably given up or hope on me at this point. I do have a ton of submissions, so I'm sorry for the delay, but let's start this off with some absolutely beautiful work by Mick, who is about to show you exactly what it means to be the Telvar Taxman. Now just keep a watch on his stones. He's starting pretty high as it is, but this group is huge. He is going to work through tens of people here and he is just terminating. Now some of these guys even have the IC set on so they are risking juicy amounts of stones. It ain't going to matter. They are soon going to be in mixed hands. He starts off one player at a time just ripping through. Two hitting every single one. Light attack, surprise attack, bash, CMA and rinse and repeat. So we're going to see him in a bit of trouble as you should. Getting out there, as he does, just gets straight back in there. Rips down another guy, moves out, 500 stones. Thank you very much, mate. Off your trot. Sees that IC Telvar sitting there. It looks tempted in. I know, but he's making the right choice here. Leave him for last. He's going to be a tanky little bastard. Skipping through a bit, we're going to move in. He's going to kite away slowly and surely. Beautiful use of tether, by the way. I love that use. See, I didn't know how good that morph was. It gives you a huge heal. Absolutely massive. Starting off, he's going to rip through the low levels here. Kiting his way to safety. Beautiful work there. Moving himself nicely into cloak. As the res comes in, off you go, mate. But he's a clever man. He's going to let this guy get the res complete because why not? Can kill him again. More stones, more fun, eh? We're up to 13k at this point. No point stopping there, mate. Let's keep moving on. So he's going to have to kite here. A lot of major pressure. As you can see, the snare spam is real. Thank God he's stamina, eh? At least he doesn't have to put up with that stuff. Mr. Telvar Machine coming in strong. Again, this guy's a tanky son of a bitch, so he's going to wait. Wait for his opportunity. Sees the big boy group, and this is where stuff gets real. Now, this is why I love this clip, because it's my favorite part of the whole icy zone. What he's going to do is he's going to use these stairs and the boxes, and these are kiting heaven if you know how to use them. I didn't even know anybody else knew about those boxes. They're really sneaky. And there's also a spot on the snares that I... The snares? There's plenty of those, but the stairs, that's what I meant. That he uses beautifully as well. Another 500 stones coming in. See a DK back to the respawn for you. Now at this point he's going to try cut down a few of the reses. He's still going to let some of these guys come up. Obviously every time he kills them he's getting the stones. And in the end he's the tax man here. Another 150 from him. Won't bother letting them res him. Thank you. Interrupt there. Beautiful stuff. Honestly he just plays this perfectly. It literally is perfect demonstration of Stam Nightblade. I see work. Don't let the ones that can have uh, no stones left res. Leave them on the floor, and then if they have stones, you let them res, because why not? You can kill them again. So at this point, both of these guys are completely out. He's going to keep on top of those reses, start ripping through one by one. Big in-cap coming in. Straight down he goes, 600 Telvar. Probably see him getting res in a little bit. Why not let him res, eh? SMC clan, more like SMC. See ya, mate. He's gone. He's dead. Coming in to clean up at this point, he probably just wants to cash in the cookies. Going to start working through the remaining members of this group, but these guys... They ain't happy. They want to quit at this point. He's going through another one down. One to go for the time being. I think it's sayonara for the group. He's down. Enjoy the stones, mate. You know what? I have so many 1VX clips to show today. I think one of the best things we could possibly do is a bit of interaction. So if you have a favorite today from all of these clips, please let me know. Because it's a lot of clips. It really is a ton of clips that have come to me. And... Why not let them know which your favourite is? I mean, it's only going to help the subscribers, the viewers, etc. But let's move on to some wonderful sorcerer work here. So this is some excellent use of landscape. This tower is heaven on earth for a sork. Now, our innocent sorcerer here does miss one very sexy trip he could have got. Uh, but he is going to get this group down anyway. Now, this is only a bare fraction of the enemies. He's already taken one down. As you can see, the group is starting to pour in. They're getting excited. But off he trots. And this is the sweet spot. Because at this point, they don't have a clue what they're doing. They don't know how to get to him. And they know that if they do, they are in serious trouble. So it's such a shame that he doesn't go for the flame reach here. They're all going for the sky shard. God knows why they thought that was a good idea. But here we go. Meteor on the stack. Boom. One down, two down. Off they go. But there's plenty more pouring in. As you can see, they're starting the counter ults here. He's just going to play a little defensive, let himself get ready. And now he's going to start working through every single one that makes a fall. He's dead. See ya, mate. Nice choice on that jump. Oh, wait. I'm kidding. What a dumbass. And now he's going to work through the close ones once again. So 
Lexapian or whatever on earth that name is. I'm not even going to try and read that. He's down as well. You've got three little victims. One of them's jumped off. He doesn't want to be a part. Defazo, Defaso, who even knows what that name is. He's busy. He's dead. And one to go. Locky D coming in for the seven piece. I think it's seven. Hard to say. And there we go. That's what I wanted to see. Destructive reach at its finest. One final Nightblade crawling his way in. He's seen his friends die though. So Pooh Bear. I'm afraid to say that you and your new friend are in a serious concern here. Because that's a big boy frag coming in. 9.8k. And Smaug is going to be our final victim here. He's panicking. He's dead. Clean up in R3. Nine kills. Not a problem. Very nice work by our Sork here. Next we've got Thomas who's going to use this Sork tower action. A little different to our previous tower. This guy's going to take the action full on. And this is some beautifully brutal damage this guy has. Watch this. Meteor, Fury, and see you, mate. It's that simple. 15.9k Meteor. I don't think that guy will be back in Cyril again. I think he's done. <laughs> going for the reds. That's not going to matter. We've got on watch out duty another man down. He's going to work for this group with absolutely no problems. This was my absolute favourite, that Meteor, though. Like, honestly... How would you react if you died to a 16k Meteor? I don't know about anyone else, but there's no way in hell that I would go back to PvP again if my first reaction, this guy is nearly a recruit, was to die to a 15k Meteor. That must suck. He's playing really, really nice defense here with his shields. Accidentally falls off there, but it's not going to matter. In the end, it's sort of going to work out to his favor because these guys are going to follow and they're going to split up. And that's going to give him his opening here to break them up with a bit of damage. Beautiful Meteor into the group. Coming in a second. He's holding it any second now. He's going to drop that bad boy. But for the time being, we're going to say goodbye to our little Nightblade friend here. Boom, Nightblade. See ya, mate. Beautiful Meteor once again. Man, I love this Meteor damage. I don't know how he's hitting so hard with that Meteor, but it's a lot of damage. He's going to work through these remaining two. They are both pretty low levels. Not going to make much difference. Unfortunately, out of stamina there. Gets the interrupt off with that last remaining bit. This is one of those problems that all 1VXs face, you know. The most annoying thing as a magic guy is when they just spam res. Because it gets so hard to have the stamina to interrupt. Like, this guy doesn't even care. He's the last man standing. But Nina, Nina is a queen of the group. She's going for the res. At this point, it's not going to matter. Because, unfortunately, she's got no distractions to take the pressure off. He's going to go in here. One final act of glory. The person is pegging it. But no worries. It's time to say goodbye. And he's down as well. See ya, mate. Now, some reinforcements going to come in right at this point. He's going to climb upstairs. Here we go. Res Squad is online. And we're going to start off Sabodo. Three stars is about to turn to zero very quickly. Frag. And he's down. See ya in hell, mate. A solid cleanup indeed. Beautiful work by our Sork. And he gets to res his friend as well. Why not? Our fourth clip brings a riffle who's going to have pretty much the same problem here. Res Squad is absolutely online. Now, it's a different story for him because he's a stamina class. So for him, he's got the stamina to burn. And all he's going to do is interrupt, clean up the shop. And these guys, well, I don't know if resing is a hobby of them. I guess we're going to find out. But these guys are just going to keep on coming. He clears up three already so far. His friend is down, but it's not going to matter very much. TJ's the next target. One in cap, surprise deck, and the bash weave to clean up. He's gone. Now we get an enemy banner. He's just going to try and sit inside that because he's got so much damage he's done. I guess that's the fight over, hey? Get a res. But no, here they come. The next wave, they're incoming from the keep again because apparently... One death is not enough. Instant weave there. That's one of the most beautiful weaves I've ever seen, by the way. In cap, bash with the weave, and it's the cleanup. Six or seven kills in about 50 seconds. Not bad at all. So continuing the love of the Stamina Nightblade, we're going to have Angel here. And Angel is going to go walk about. So with a little blue Zerg here. I really like the gameplay from Angel. I have to say, of all of the players, I felt it was the smoothest and cleanest gameplay of the clips. Now, that's nothing against the other ones. Don't get me wrong, they're all really good. But there's just something about the way she approaches all of her movement around the line of sight and things that I think is very, very elegant. That sounds ridiculous, but people kind of underestimate how important your movement actually is in this game. And I think it's one of the things that sets apart pretty skilled players. Now, in terms of the 1VX, it might not be as good as the others, but this was my favorite in terms of the movement. Um... I'm not saying it's a bad clip, by the way. This is clearly another pretty crazy good clip. It's a great clip. Don't get me wrong. 
I just like the Sork one for damage. I don't know. You guys have to vote for your favourite. I'm not supposed to bias this. But I love the movement and it's one of the things that is separating this clip from the others in terms of the way Angel is going to survive here. He's always just looking for that window of opportunity, making his movement away from the group, moving around to his preferred target, separating the preferred target from the group and executing them down. Another really great thing about this clip is how good the defense is. So in this clip, he's actually going to be facing quite a bit of damage. And because of that, and the fact that these guys are literally only spamming Mark. I mean, literally, that is all they're doing, spamming Mark. Because of that, the way he plays is going to become really important. You can see all of those AoEs fly in on the floor, a few death shots and that sort of thing. Going to kill the low B nice and easy here. Nothing too exciting about that one. Wait for it. See you, mate. But this is where the cleanup is going to finish off. He's already survived the main group. Most of these guys have given up. They know they're in trouble. These last two guys, honestly, I'm surprised they aren't pegging it. Fairblaze, Sigilson7, times are hard. You're in trouble because Angel is on the hunt. Accidentally incaps the wrong guy there. It doesn't matter. He's ripping through with 10k plus surprise tags. A lot of damage behind him here. Going to get the cleanup with the incap in a second. Quick heal going in. 3, 2, 1. And see ya, mate. I'll take it back. I thought he cleaned up there. Fuck. Don't comment on my commenting. Now he's dead. There we go. He's going to clean up the final guy. He's already out of resources. He's burn it all going for the burst. The nuke. Magicka DK. Stamina Nightblade in this situation. It's a dire straits moment. Incap. All blocked. Doesn't matter because look at the damage. And off he trots. One final guy coming in. He tries to rescue the day. A bit of choke fawn. You know you're in a bad situation when you don't see C-Break, when Chokeboard's your main monster set. Yup, he's in trouble. Incap, big kill debuff. This guy's just running the tank. Blazing Spear Spam. He's excited. He's privileged. And in a second, he is dead. See you later, mate. Now he's going to get a little AD fight here. Bonus points for the double alliance. Coming with the Incap straight down with the surprise attack. This sorcerer doesn't have a clue what he's doing. He's running the Maelstrom staff. Full PvE build. And he is dead in seconds. Beautiful work, my man. Lovely, lovely clip. Next up, we've got Vretta again on that Stamina Nightblade. This whole video is pretty dominated by Stamina Nightblade and Magisaw. But this one, again, was a really good clip. It kind of felt criminal, even though it was a lot of Stamina Blade to not give it. So I kind of nicknamed this one Commander of Sejanus because that is pretty much what's going to happen here. It's kind of sad. These AD just can't get out of the spawn. They want to go do their siege. I'm telling you, I always say it on my stream. People get excited about a good siege. When they see that keep under attack, it's like the beacon is lit. They are ready to rock. They want to get involved in that siege. But when they meet someone like Veretta, they soon don't want to get involved in that siege. Let me tell you that. Coming in with that 10k surprise tag just now. He's under a bit of pressure here. The bow ult is not a good ulti to be facing as a stand night bit since it rips straight through cloak. But Veretta deals with it very nicely. Line of sight on the rock and slowly moving around his opponent. So at this point, he can't see anyone. He's going to wait for them to pressure him. Just moving them around these rocks again to give him that positional advantage. He doesn't want to be sitting here. Those NPCs on the keep It's going to put him in an awful position. At this point, he's built up a few enemies. He's going to know as well as any good 1vx knows he's got a choice here. Either he moves away and kites them to get them right out of the way, or he gets rid of them quickly. Vretta, aggressive gameplay, solid choice by the way. I like aggressive gameplay. He's going to go for the early cleanup here. So as quickly as he can, he's going to go for the burst. Solid use of the relentless focus. The final tick of poison injection with a takedown. Brad as OX, when you see a guy with 16.3k health, you know times are hard. One hit, see ya mate, just a surprise stack, that's all it's going to take there. And then Project, 20k health, same again here really. Incap and the cleanup coming in strong. So that's the first wave done, but he is not done here. Let the waves continue. I'm Danny, no, you're dead mate, that's what you are. You are in big trouble. Vretta's coming in hot, got that Relentless ready, big Relentless, Merciless, is a beautiful skill. Both Stamina and Magicka hit really, really hard. And a lot of people underestimate using that morph uh, on the Stamina, actually using it when you get the proc. A lot of people waste that. It's a huge amount of burst, especially when following an incap. This was one of the only clips I saw where it was really getting used to max effectiveness on the Stam Light Bait. So that was a really, really good advantage of this clip. Now, as you can see, Sustain is a little tight here. He's going to have to make his way out. Pretty risky bigger there. Probably would have gone for the rally, but he's going to get away with it. And at this point, he's going to be able to move up and regen as best as possible. A lot of people grouping up now. He's up to five enemies. One of them pretty squishy here. Bradis, again, with that 16k health. Not a chance, mate. And at this point, he's in an ugly, ugly scenario. A lot of Sorks. 
pretty shell stacky, pretty defensive. How do you get around this? Answer, you leave the Sorks as much as possible. You want to kite those Sorks, exactly what he's going to do here. He's going to focus the Lobie down, probably a good choice. It's not going to matter, the Lobie's gone, so ignore him. Haptic Knight, it's got to be the next target unless you shield, see a shield Sork, uh, blah, blah, blah. A shield Sork, that's what I mean, drop. Everybody knows I said that. Don't say anything in the comments. He sees his opponents here brewing up. LV bleed, shields are fully up. So at this point, it's going to be a good choice to take a defensive stance. And at this point, kiting, probably the best choice. Look at that. As I say, shadow image coming in strong. He wants to move his opponents. There's too many at this point to try to take on head on. So why not move them to the position where you've got advantage? As they start to move around this line of sight, he's line of sighted half the group so he can start going for the kills. Massive surprise stack, 10.1k, not a problem. Clearing up that opponent nice and easy. Again, just using these rocks. This rock is a heavenly spot. If any of you guys want to get in 1BX, where would I suggest fighting these rocks? Anytime it's online is brilliant. Brutal in cap coming in, poison injection with a big tick of 3.6k to finish off. And kite begins. So he's getting proxied. Not very good news. It's not much damage, but it's going to be breaking that cloak. This guy loses his shields. Never lose shields as a Sork. He's down 9.5k surprise stack after an 11k in cap. Not a chance. Off he trots. And now the enemies are in trouble. Bit of lag coming in. Not going to matter very much because at this point there's so many enemies that he knows he's going to have to kite. He's going to move out of that fight nice and easily. Our final clip of the day is going to come in from Tix, who's going to show you exactly what happens when a group dies. Oh wait, no he's not. He's going to show you what happens when a group dies that's got him in, because it's not going to matter. Basically, most of his group has just died to the DC Zerg, the flags, etc. And Tix has been left alone, because nobody else is around. What he's going to be doing, is he's going to be doing the solo clutch. He's going to work his way through these guys. Now, as far as I'm informed, these guys were supposed to be pretty good players that are against him. I know a couple of the names-ish from other people's streams. There's one or two. So I think this is a pretty good effort considering. But he's going to have to play, once again, the Stamina Nightblade. And he's going to have to play defensively because it's a decent group of players. A lot of high health builds. Clearly some decent ranks in there. And he's going to need to play his aggression in a way that's not going to get him killed. Because once he's dead, there's no coming back from this. Kills one nice and easily there. Very low resources at this point. So he's going to have to start throwing some heavy attacks, which you're going to see in the near future. But for the time being, he just wants to kite his opponent and wait for a window. Great window for Burst here. Unfortunately, doesn't quite get the nuke. He's now fled. So there goes the healing. Good time to move out of danger. That's what I would do. That's not what Tick does. He goes in for the nuke and gets a quick kill. Putting him in that 1v1. Not for long though. Here come the friends. He's up to three opponents once again. MFQ looking like a pretty quick kill here. Darth not healing up too hard. So these two are going to go down pretty quick. First one gets in cap. Surprise attacked. Clean up in R3. The other one's not even cast a heal yet. So he's basically might as well just log out. He's going to die very, very quickly. Bit of lag on the fear, not going to matter very much. He's still not healed, so he is down. And then we've got DMZ again with the same group. They've all got very similar names. He's going to be taken down as well. And finally, PRHB, you can see the voice chat in the bottom right. His group is going to come in and they're like, I actually got the voice on this one. Uh, they basically say something along the lines of, oh, you killed them all already. Well, yeah, he did. They've cleaned every single one. His friend's going to watch him. There you see, damn lol. Pretty well summarized. Every single enemy down before his group can even come rescue the day. Beautiful day, Tix. Great play indeed. And the final kill coming in strong.